hello friends so basically this is uh, my first post on uh, the data transformations I mean the data uh, the transformations which happen during the data flow tasks so this is my first uh, uh, video I am posting that's on our aggregate transform before beginning uh, the transformations that we have I mean in SSIS let's get to know about the different kinds of transformation uh, transformations broadly can be classified into two types that is of synchronous and asynchronous transformations transformations like uh, the we have the derived column and the data conversions are of synchronous type now what's what's a synchronous type of transformation uh, a synchronous type for type of transformation is one in which the record uh, records uh, uh, of data flow into the memory buffers in the in the transform and the same buffer comes out now what do we mean by that i mean it happens uh, when the memory uh, when when the data gets loaded into the memory and the transformation happens and the same data is 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 uh, out of the memory buffers at the same time so there is no record actually which is held uh, held up typically these transformations are very quick actually and and minimal and of minimal impact in the data flow so you can consider them as as really quick ones in in terms of when you are trying to use them in your data flow tasks asynchronous transformations again uh, are of partial and full blocking types now what is partial blocking i mean transformation like a union all transformation which uh, is is of a partial blocking type it creates a new memory buffer for output than what comes into the output uh, input buffer so basically there is a different buffer that's com coming out from from the output for each of the union also so uh, that is uh, would that would be a partial blocking full blocking would again be something like a sort transform or an aggregate transform which is which we are going to uh, uh, take a look at I in this case the entire data needs to be loaded into the buffer only th only then your uh, data can be aggregated or, or, or sorted out uh, and, and then and that comes out from the output buffer these kind of uh, 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 transformations are of full blocking type and hence it's it's uh, really important if uh, if you can uh, try and rule them out because it's it's uh, it really costs ssis memory buffers a lot in terms of of the memory usage and also the uh, also the transformation it becomes uh, memory intensive so uh, those are the different types of uh, broadly uh, transformations that we are looking at now let's uh, try and uh, go back to the example that we had i mean in my last video i had discussed data viewers so in the, in the data viewers i had uh, given an example of data flow task i'll be using the same example to demonstrate the aggregate transforms uh, what we have is is, is nothing but a, a transaction history table which we are looking at it it consists of all the transactions uh, and uh, the quantity of uh, ordered quantity and the number of uh, and, and the transaction dates etc so basically uh, we'll be trying to use aggregate trans uh, transforms on that and let's see how we have this is the uh, uh, OLEDB source source that we have as discussed in my last video now what I have put in, in place is an aggregate transform aggregate transform is nothing uh, is nothing but but something of what you would uh, in a SQL query would be a group by or a maximum minimum I mean all the aggregates that you have counts of a certain columns and etc so let's just try and, and, and look uh, at the example that we have here oops I, I guess my system has hung uh, give me a sec yeah so let's just take a look at the aggregate transform that we have in place here so once you open the aggregate transform editor what you would be seeing is all the columns that you uh, that you uh, have in your in coming as an input so basically uh, what we have done uh, what i have done here is is use the column product id and uh, transaction type for grouping by so if you if you just take a look at uh, at this the product ID and your uh, transaction type is being grouped 
upon and your quantity as the other column and actual cost is is actually uh, being actual cost is is being used for maximum so basically if you if you look at the operations you'll get to see what all operations you have you can count you can count distinct you can sum average maximum or minimum and also group by so basically it's 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 your clause so if we are getting the actual maximum actual cost and uh, also getting the count of the quantities uh, which were being ordered at this cost and, and the group by uh, grouping it by the pro product ID and the transaction type so uh, that's uh, the selection that you will be making for your aggregate transforms I have a data viewer here which is uh, if you take a look which is actually Uh, giving the output of uh, coming out from the aggregate transform here so uh, and the flat file destination is again our uh, it's an empty one for now let's see so it's an it's an empty one for now okay now if we run this SSIS package we get all the columns from production uh, transaction history table into uh, which which feeds into the aggregate transform the aggregate transform groups it by the transaction type and uh, the product id and counts and gives the actual cost maximum actual cost of uh, the group by columns that is our product id and the actual transaction and, and the transaction type uh, so let's just wait for this task to execute okay from uh, management pr uh, from sql server management studio perspective if you if you take a look uh, what i am trying to achieve is nothing but uh, this query uh, which is uh, which is being built uh, i mean in terms of the uh, the trans transformation that we are having so we are grouping it by the product id and the transaction uh, transaction type and order uh, order by the product id and uh, we are actually count uh, counting the quantity and getting the maximum and fetching the maximum ag actual cost so these are the four four columns that we are, are we are fetching here if uh, if you will i mean this is the query that we are, are trying to achieve Oop, uh, i guess my So it's it's running for. Uh, it's giving you all this is this is the data viewer grid data viewer the which which is which is the output of your transformation that you have, and based upon that your area flow task has run. So let's just take a look at the uh, output file. If you have, if you take a look at the output file, you have the product ID, quantity, transaction type, and the actual cost, uh, actual cost, which is act, uh, which is, mm, which is the maximum one, and the quantity is also, uh, is it's the count of the quantities. So for each of the product ID and transaction types. So. so uh, the aggregate transform is as far as is uh, one of the ways of doing it but uh, what i would advise is since it's uh, it's an asynchronous type and it's of uh, a full uh, fully asynchronous i mean in terms of uh, the data that is being pumped and it has to wait for the complete trans i mean uh, transversal of the, uh, of all the data being loaded only then it is it is able to do it so what i would suggest is 
whenever you are trying to build this you uh, and you can if uh, rather use the query itself the uh, the reason primary reason i wanted to show it is you can use this query directly to uh, um, feed it into your ssis packages uh, input so basically instead of table in view you rather go for a sql command and and fetch your uh, and and give this query as your input query and then uh, use your columns etc and and build your input uh, source so that's uh, that's one of uh, that that would be a better way of actually doing things so that would uh, fetch the data directly in the query one go at, uh, at the at one go and your aggregate transform would not be actual act of actual usage so that would be a better way of doing things and but but uh, in terms of the transformation that you can use this is uh, this is uh, the aggregate transform for you and hope this is useful to you so let's that's what that was the first among the transformation that i have discussed so thank you friends and hope to catch up on the next transformation that i'll be discussing thank you so much